put up some new lights in the dino room and they seem to work pretty good yeah the car looks a little bit better on camera so we have a 2022 wrx ets top mount ets intake ets j pipe down in the hole and a bloush upgraded turbo it would be the 5056 which is the stock location stock frame turbo that bloush just made curious to see what this does i really like these new vb wrx's um, they seem to make a lot of power just out of the box with really basic parts and they seem to hold up a lot better than the previous generation so this is a 22 and the 15 to 21 were good they made decent power but they just didn't seem to hold up and this engine seems to handle the boost and abuse a lot better not to mention it has this super cool dash reminding you to obey traffic rules um, the dashboard looks pretty good they sound good when they start not nearly as obnoxious as the previous generation with the cold start modes and yeah it's a it's a pretty cozy car the seats are super comfortable so we're tuning this on an access port today and first step as always is to upgrade the access port firmware or at least check to make sure that it's running the newest firmware so access port manager So these cars, when you first tune them, the first time you install, they will ask you if you actually want to save the factory data or not. And if you say no, then obviously it can't export the factory data. And it's not a required step, and they, they don't make you do it because it takes like 30 minutes to save the factory data. So I've already tuned this car once, we're just retuning it for some changes. Um, so I'm letting it warm up. Sometimes I'll, like if I was tuning it from scratch, I would start with a, uh, a reflash, then let it warm up. That way I can make sure that in the warm up modes it ran correctly. But since we've already tuned it, um, basically we're retuning it for a high flow J pipe and an upgraded turbocharger. So what we need to do is make changes to the tune for those parts and then do some pulls. So we can start with warming it up. So when tuning these cars for a bigger turbo, as you can see, there's no real, like there's not any real time tuning available yet for them. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna take the boost target and we're gonna drop it down so that it's not targeting. We're targeting 19. We're just gonna put this whole thing at 14. Go to there. And what we're gonna do is see if A, the turbo can even do 14 pounds and what wastegate position we're at to do that 14 pounds. Because this car doesn't have a traditional wastegate actuator. What it has is an electronic gate that has millimeters of position. So here, 14.31 column. This is our wastegate position for various different boost levels at different RPMs. So we're gonna tune this column, and then we'll raise the boost up, you know, 17 or so, tune that column, and so on and so on, until we have our wastegate target map that goes across, you know, across out. And uh, this one's only scaled out to 20, so um, we'll see what it ends up looking like. We might actually scale this out to 21 and see if we can run 21 pounds on this car. Um, but yeah, it's a pretty interesting way of doing things and it reacts really fast and actually works pretty well um, But it's a bit time-consuming to tune the first of each turbo setup. So um, Yeah stock turbo this map works pretty well for me. Um, it gets me probably 90% On most stock turbo cars, although this is a this is a stock turbo stock J pipe when you do a J pipe All these numbers are gonna have to change so it'll be interesting to see what this car does on this first pull. One of the biggest problems when you're tuning these is they don't currently, and this will change, support fast flash. So it takes quite a while to make each tuning revision. And when you're doing things like changing a millimeter of wastegate position, 
it, it, you can see where the time, it'd be very time consuming to tune the first one for each setup. So yeah, you can see 1% and it doesn't end up going any faster than this. Like this is just how long it takes. Let's see how lights are off. It takes, there's two, yeah. So it's a process tuning these cars. Um, time consuming but definitely worth it. And they make so much power and so much torque out of the box. This one is actually, when I first tuned this car, it was one of the earlier ones that I had done right after these came out and the tuning became available. And so I didn't have it running a ton of boost or a ton of torque. Um, and it still made 323 horsepower to the wheels and 385 foot-pounds of torque with just an intake a top mount intercooler and an exhaust. Not totally stock J-pipe, totally stock turbo, totally stock everything else. So uh, pretty wild the kind of numbers just out of the box on these. And that was only at a peak of 19 pounds and it tapered off a little bit up towards red line. So not bad for not a ton of boost and just 92 octane pump gas that we have here in Oregon. So yeah, we're now at 12%. And yeah, that's this is this is what we don't like. But Cobb has officially said they are working on fast flash for this car, so hopefully before long we'll have it. So went ahead and did my first pull. Like I said, our wastegate target, or our boost target was gonna be 14 pounds. We hit just a little over that. Um, and I'm just showing you RPM in green, wastegate position in red, and our boost actual in white. So you can see what we're gonna do on this car. Um, 3,000 RPM, this turbo, so I'm actually really happy with this turbo. I'll show you that dyno pull in one second. Um, but you can see, our wastegate position at 30, uh, 3,000 RPMs is only two millimeters now. So what we're gonna do, go ahead and close our logger here, at 3,000 RPMs, so 3,200. So yeah, we were, we were targeting like four before, and now you can see we peak out actually at six. So we had to use a lot more wastegate up top. Um, and it's pretty linear from about two, at 3,000 to six up at 6,000. So we're just gonna do that. We'll go to 6,006. And we're gonna see if that gets us a little bit closer and we're not using nearly as much correction. Um, yeah, this is gonna be kind of fun to tune. Um, what I'm going to do is go ahead and copy this, clear out to the end, because we're going to let the, the, the car's boost dynamic control correct for us as we change our boost targets. So we're going to go up here on this next pull to 16 pounds. Actually, we'll just do this 15.76 because that's the next line on our chart here. So we're going to target this 15.76. And we're just gonna see, see what wastegate position it takes to get that. And then we're gonna populate that into this boost control dynamic that we have. So we're basically gonna plug in our final position numbers into our initial position here and just kind of tune that way. And we're gonna just do a, a pull and a pull and just keep going up and boost just a little bit incrementally and keep changing this until we have a new wastegate position curve for this turbo on this particular setup. And then we can populate this to future cars that we tune with this, um, this combination of parts. So it's a pretty cool way of doing it. Um, it works really well. And I told you I was gonna show you that horsepower graph. Just one second, I'll pull that up. All right, so here was the previous poll. Um, this was at 19 pounds. Now I don't have boost graft on the dyno because these cars have a very difficult to get a boost pickup on. But this first pull at 14 pounds, 
you can see it's it's in the blue it's a little bit lower on horsepower and that's fine but look up top even right there at 5800 it starts to carry over and actually make more power up top it's not falling off because everything's being efficient so once we turn this up to about 19 pounds we're going to see this down low power come up and the top end power should also come up um, i went ahead and raised the rev limiter a little bit um, both by customer request and just because uh, it's going to be able to to handle a higher rev limiter so this will be fun to see what this turbo does through the data log um, I'm getting my final flash in there and I will show you where we're at from a power standpoint um, 355 horse currently 413 foot-pounds we hit about 19 19 and a half pounds and we taper off to about 17 and a half 18 up top um, that's that's really because this is still a top mount intercooler car um, just trying to keep it efficient and keep everything working well um, so we're not going to run a ton of boost out the top. If this was a front mount car, we would try to see if we could make 21 stick out the top. But they just get so knock sensitive at high RPM that it's not ideal. Uh, but yeah, tons of torque. What's crazy is when you overlay this with the original hull, there's almost no difference in low end spool up. Now this does, the car does have the upgraded turbo and an upgraded J pipe over the first time it was on the dyno. So it's not really an apples to apples comparison, but you can see up top, let's get rid of torque here. We have, you know, right there, that's a 50 horsepower difference at 6,000 RPMs, and we're carrying it clear out past 6,500 now. So it's definitely gonna feel a lot faster. Um, and then, like I said, we come in here to torque, and you can see, these are corrected numbers. These aren't some kind of uncorrected, whatever numbers that some people post but just a lot more torque everywhere so this car is just going to feel a lot faster at pretty much the same boost level so this is still 19 pounds down low tapering off a little bit up top um, and you can see it's just overall much 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 happier tried a couple things to get a little more power out the top and it just wasn't having it so I actually made a little bit more 361 trying to run the boost out higher but it's just not gonna have it with this intercooler and this octane so um, you know this is pretty dang good numbers uh, if we could get the octane up in this we'd probably see around 400 or more on this intercooler setup so pretty solid like I said, it's only 19 pounds down low, tapering off to about 18 up top. Um, if we could run 22, 23 the whole way, oh my gosh, this thing would just, this thing would just rip. But hey, you know, look at those torque numbers. Over 400. Not bad. Thing, another fun thing I wanted to show you is this car has individual requested torque per gear settings. So we can set it up to in third gear request the full amount of torque but like in fourth gear to request slightly less torque so 345 instead of 350 and what that's going to get us in our boost targets is if we go to our 345 column here so 345 is looking about this is upside 355 here we go 345 345 we're actually a half a pound less and then 340 we're another half pound so I've got it taken a half a pound out in each of the subsequent gears from 4th, 5th, and 6th. And that way we're not going to try to overboost or put too much load on this engine as it's, as you know, the customer is trying to floor it in 6th gear. Which is never a great idea, but people do it anyway. So that's what we've got. Uh, thanks for watching.